So, you want to make a Splatoon poster that's better than your T-Post masterpiece? Well, you've come to the right place! My YouTube channel! Yeah! In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to make a Splatoon poster in Source Filmmaker from start to finish. I will be covering everything you need to know to make a masterpiece. Well, if you count 3D artwork with Nintendo characters as a masterpiece. I will also be showing you how to edit the poster after you've rendered it. All the software I will be using is free, and I have download links for them in the description. I will be assuming you have some basic understanding of Source Filmmaker, like being able to make this. And if you don't know how to use Source Filmmaker at all, I would recommend watching Benji Fridges tutorials. He covers the very basics of the software. And with that said, let's start. To save time I will be calling Source Filmmaker SFM. Before launching Source Filmmaker, I will show you how to have it in 1080p or even 4K, because uh, the native resolution is only 720p. So uh, just open up Steam, go to Manage, Properties, and Set Launch Options. And then you type in this. I will have it in the description so you, so you can just uh, copy and paste it. Uh, this is for 4K, but... Uh, because I'm recording and my PC isn't the best in the world, I will have it just 1080p. I will switch to 4K when, I, when it's time to render the poster because of course you want 4K. So I usually have 1080p when I'm working on the poster and when it's time to render it, I switch to 4K. So just click OK. Now we can launch SFM. OK, now it's time to name the poster. It doesn't really matter, so... Yeah, boy! So I have uh, two screens here, because uh, I like to have um, two cameras at once. So I can have my work camera here and uh, my uh, second camera here. Just right click, load map. Which map should we choose? Let's pick Moray Towers. It's, it's a good map. I use it often. And I'm assuming you know how to download uh, stuff from the workshop, it's very easy. So now we're in Moray Towers and let's pick a good spot. Here, why not? Let's put down a model, an inkling I guess. Inkling girl with green eyes, why not? I like the color green. Now we just open up the eyes and bam. So now we need to put on some clothes. So search for Splatoon clothing because that's the shirt. Let's just go with a simple t-shirt. If you right click on the shirt you can change the uh, skin. I like this one. So now we need to put it on. So we need to find... Uh, we need to find joint root. Here it is and uh, just drag it to the other joint root. And now do it for everything else. There we go. And now, just click uh, on uh, one of them and drag the zero to uh, the right. And now on uh, all the other ones. There we go. Look at that. That's great. And remember to save, so uh, press Ctrl S. Or File Save. You don't want to lose your progress. So now we want some shoes. So um, search for Splatoon shoes. Yeah, let's go with basics. Uh, yeah, this skin, it matches the hair. And uh, if you want to change the hair color, you can uh, right click, add override materials, uh, show in element viewer, model, and click on materials, and then inkling girl team color, and here you can change the color. But I don't want to do that, so control Z. And now we're gonna put on the shoes, like uh, how we did uh, with the shirt. There we go. That looks good. Let's say we want a hat. We want something on her head. So uh, let's search for a Splatoon headgear. This uh, bucket uh, hat. Uh, yeah, this one. Why not? This is the easiest one. It's just the head. Done. <laughs> uh, and now we have a hat. That's great. Control S. Uh, and uh, now we want to pose her. And yeah, one thing. <laughs> I forgot to... Uh, uh, create a camera, so do that. I like to have it at the top and switch to it 
Bam. And now, time to pose her. Uh, I'm gonna say right away, I am not good at posing. So, I don't know how this will uh, look, but I hope it will look good. I'm gonna try to do something here. And if you don't know how, how you're gonna pose it, uh, do the pose yourself in real life and then you can see how it how it's done. You know what, I think I want uh, her to run. So let's do that. And maybe she's looking... Uh, maybe she's looking uh, behind her. Someone is uh, following her or something. Maybe she's getting chased by an arkling, I don't know. So let's do that. Let's fix the eyes. There we go. And the head. There is a head. And maybe she's like terrified or something. She's sort of scared of the octoling. Like that. And now uh, we need to pose the arms. But first, let, let you know what? Let's pose the hair. Okay, let's pose the hair first before the arms. So um, the hair is not in the way. Here's the hair. And yes, I'm not using the IK models because I'm I'm so used to uh, I'm used to the regular one. Make sure it looks good. Make sure it looks good. And now for the other side. Make sure it doesn't clip in the ear, but are you gonna see the ear? Maybe, I don't know. Because if you don't see the ear, then it's not a problem. Uh, let's put on the camera in a good position. We should change the lens. Rotate it a bit. adjust it so it looks good okay let's pose the hair again i'll go back to the camera later you gotta go back and forth all the time <laughs> at least i do that so right now you see the hair so you gotta make sure it looks good It should go in this direction because she's coming from there and not there. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. So now we gotta work on the arms there. Yeah, like that maybe. It's not the best, but it, it works. The, the hand. So uh, just post it like how you have, um, like your hand is uh, when you're running, not uh, like running really fast. Some normal running. If you couldn't tell already, I won't be spending uh, that much uh, time on the poster because I don't want the video to be three hours long or something. So, the poster won't be the best. That looks fine, I guess. Let's spawn in uh, an octoling. Orange eyes, why not? Let's change the hair color. So, add or override uh, materials. Show in element viewer. Model. Materials. Octoling girl team color. Now you can change the color. Uh, let's pick blue, because I like blue. Let's change the skin tone. That works. Open up the eyes. Remember to save. Good. And now let's put on some octoling armor. And now it's the same process as before. There we go. Now a pair of octoling boots. And now the same process as before, of course. There we go. Remember to save. And now it's time to pose her. So, hmm. 
Maybe she's throwing a bomb. <laughs> there we go. I always start with the legs. Just bend them a little bit. Because I don't think you're gonna stand straight when throwing a, a bomb. Just adjust every part of the body so it looks good. You don't want it to look uh, robotic or just unnatural. And now the throwing part. Uh, where is the arm? Put it in her hand. Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a big bomb. Maybe too big. Make sure it's not clipping. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, I know it's clipping there, but I'll move the thumb, so that don't worry. And now for the... for... Uh, what is it? <laughs> fingers, yeah, fingers. English, Oliver. Make sure she is uh, gripping on the ball. There we go, that's fine. Oh, you, you can't even see the fingers. That's great. Now for the other ha arm. Okay, so now it's time for um, uh, the head. I don't know if we need to change much, but uh, just a tiny bit. Then the eyes on her. Yeah, it's pretty close already. Like that, that that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, okay now for the face expression. Uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, Let's change the camera position a little bit. The camera angle, sorry. Like that. Yeah, the eyebrows, sorry. Uh, there we go. Now, uh, let's add some background elements, like maybe some boxes or something. Just to f fill it out more. We can add some ink on the ground. Oh, it's already orange, that's great. Let's add uh, different colors. Orange and blue, because the octoling is blue. And now you know how to change the color. And you can change the size too. Just go to root transform and click add scale control to transforms. And then you can change the scale. Like that. That's great. Maybe some ink here. Bam. Okay. Now it's time for the lighting. Because I'm uh, always editing my posters. Uh, so what I usually do is bring the brightness down. To uh, tone map scale. Uh, and then add uh, lighting, so I, I have more flexibility, so it doesn't, uh, so so it's not overexposed. But you might be saying, uh, oh, the the sky will be dark. Well, I have a fix for uh, that later. You you'll see. If you're gonna edit, you it's it's fixable. If you're not gonna edit the poster, you can maybe have the tone map scale up uh, more. But I I'm gonna edit it, so uh, I'll I'll bring it down a bit. So now for the lighting, just. Create a light, and uh, I, I'm gonna make a fake sun over here. We need a different color of the light, so it looks like a sun. We want it to be wider. Uh, we want to enable volumetrics, at least for now, rotate it. Now make sure uh, everything has lighting, so it looks uh, good. We have some light here, that's good. We don't need shadows now, so because we're gonna probably have a lot of uh, light, so um, we need to disable shadows as much as possible, because you can't have many... Uh, Lights that have shadows. That's how uh, Source Filmmaker works. And now you might be saying, Oh, that doesn't look like a sun. Well, that's why we're gonna edit. But if you're not gonna edit, you can uh, change the volumetric intensity. And bam, that looks more like a sun. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna add more lighting so it looks good. Some lighting here. Here. Let's say we don't want volumetrics here. So disable it. Uh, and... Disable here too. And now we don't see the ground here, so we don't have to. We don't have to light this uh, ground. But uh, we see this ground, so we need to light it. We need to uh, have some lighting here and make sure it looks natural. Add some more lights. 
Now it's very bright there, so uh, that's not really good. Let's turn down the intensity and move it here, so uh, so the light doesn't um, so so the light isn't uh, on the ink because the ink reflects the right light so much. There's some here. Now it's time to light the inkling and octoling. So now it's time to enable shadows. The light is coming from uh, there. You can uh, you can always uh, uh, enable light thrust them so you can see where the light light is uh, going. There. Yeah, that looks good. Or uh, wait a minute, this is too much. Just bring it down a bit. The intensity. Because uh, I want realistic lighting this time, I won't be uh, having many different colors of light. Because since when is the sun a rainbow? There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Wait, wait a minute. We can, we can light it octoling a little bit. Maybe it's not super realistic to have uh, to have the light going here, but it's a poster. Come on. You want you want it to look good. There we go. That looks at least a little bit better. A little bit better. You know what, we can, we can add uh, some more light. It doesn't have to be super realistic lighting. And bam, I think the lighting is done now. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing, actually. If you want to, you can uh, make the eyes glow if you, if you like that. You can do it in the editing after we have rendered it, but let, let's do it now. I, I'll, I'll show... Uh, I'll show how to do it. So we need we need the color green, the right hue. Bring down the intensity and uh, just make it less wide. So then you just shine a light in the uh, in the eye. In in real life that would be a terrible idea, but this is just a poster. Bring down the intensity a lot. Now it's glowing. Look at that. And then you just then you can copy and paste it. That was pretty good. It looks pretty good to me. But uh, as I said, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to make it glow here. You can make it uh, glow in uh, in the editing. Let's make the octoling's eyes glow too. Oh yeah, I forgot to say now. Uh, you're probably experiencing. Uh, a lot of lag now with uh, a lot of light and I mean I am doing it. I am definitely experiencing lag so uh, if, if you want to reduce some lag right click and disable lighting. That's really bad when you're working on lighting so you can't do we can't do it now. But you c what you can do is uh, disable ambient, ambient occlusion. It will make it really ugly but at least it's less laggy but I I would rather have lag uh, when I'm working on lighting <laughs> because I want to see how it looks. There we go, now the eyes are glowing. But I will delete it because I will also be showing you how to do it in, uh, in the editing. And uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, the re reflection in the eyes. I don't know what you think. It's your opinion. Right click, render settings, and um, make sure the depth of field is uh, at at uh, 1024. I think you can have it on 512, but I have it on the max. You will definitely see a difference because uh, this will remove the ugly grain. In a few seconds, you will see that the grain is gone. See? Now it looks now it looks good. So let's save. I think it's time to render it now. But first, 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 uh, there's something left actually. It's time to s switch to 4K because of course we want it in 4K. So yeah, save, open Steam and um, go to Source Filmmaker and go to Properties again. Set Launch Options and uh, change to 4K. 
I have uh, I have it in the description, so you so you can just copy and paste it. Click OK and launch Source Filmmaker. And uh, now it will tell you if the game window is smaller than the SFM render resolution, but just ignore it because it will still work. And then you can open recent and it's gonna load now. And bam! Now it will be really laggy. Look. So uh, this is why I don't recommend uh, working, uh, working on the poster in 4K. Freak, I forgot. You can change the bloom if you want, but I think it's I think it's uh, good as it is. So uh, we'll leave it as it is. So go to export movie because um, when you export a poster, the blur in the background we don't have any blur now. But uh, if you would have blur, you would just bring up the aperture and uh, set the vocal distance, no, not vocal, <laughs> focal, and uh, see. But we want uh, to. We want the octoling to be in focus, so um, we don't want it. So uh, when you export it as a poster, the blur and the bloom won't be... Sh it, it, it just isn't there. It's, it's gone. If you want the bloom and uh, blur, you have to uh, choose movie. Save. Now we gotta put it somewhere. I'm just gonna put it uh, in my uh, picture folder. And now the resolution. 4K of course, and no audio of course. <laughs> and now... Make sure it's a, make sure it's an image sequence. No separate wave file, and PNG of course. You want JPEG? JPEG is for losers. <laughs> Just kidding. But choose PNG. Choose frames. Custom. Change this to one. And what we have done now is, uh, it's gonna render one frame of the animation. Which is basically just a poster. It's the same quality and everything. So um, that's great. So now time to export it. And this will take a while, so um, be right back. And when it's done, it's time to open up paint.net. And this program is uh, it is free to use, and uh, I've used it for uh, how many years now? Four years, I think. So I, I've used it uh, quite a lot. So now uh, we just have to drag it in. Open. Here we have it. And now uh, I'm gonna show you how to make the sky brighter, because now you can see it's pretty dark. So make a new layer. Just click here, add new layer, and select the lasso tool. And now you're gonna select the sky. You don't have to be precise, just do that. And remember to ho hold control so so the old selection doesn't um, doesn't disappear, because if I don't hold control, it will disappear. So um, r remember to hold control. So as you can see, it doesn't have to be precise. There we go. And now click on the background layer and uh, press Control c and go to the second layer and press Control v and now go to adjustments and click brightness and contrast and now we can uh, make uh, the sky brighter so uh, ignore uh, the part uh, the part here we will erase it later but y just look at the sky so let's say uh, let's say this is good so okay and now you can erase it. I would recommend to have the hardness very low, so it erases very smoothly. And you can experiment with the brush width. So be careful when you do this. You don't want the sky to be dark again. Look, that looks terrible. There we go. And here I would use a smaller brush. There we go, that looks fine. And also, if, if you're wondering how I can zoom in and out uh, pretty fast, I'm, I scroll uh, while, while holding down control. And panning left and right, I just uh, hold shift. And up and down, I don't hold anything. So that's how I can navigate around pretty quickly. There we go, look at that! And if you want the sky even brighter, you can adjust it even more. But I, I think that's uh, fine. So uh, now I will merge the layers, so it becomes just a single layer. Now we can tweak the brightness and contrast or saturation. Uh, right now I want to tweak the brightness and contrast. Uh, this looks good. And now we can go to saturation. Look, it's a bit more colorful now. And now I'm gonna add some glow on the eyes. So uh, what you need to do is add a new layer and select the color picker. 
remember to uh, select the background layer because it uh, because it will just select nothing then. So select background and bam. Now we will have the eye color. Okay, so now go to the second layer and select the brush tool, paintbrush. And keep the hardness very low and change the brush width to something that looks good. And just paint over the eye and the other eye too. And now you may say, oh that looks terrible. I agree. So now go to properties on the second layer and change the blend mode to screen or additive and bring down the opacity a bit. That looks pretty good. And of course if you're not happy with it, you can always experiment more. Time for the octoling size. Make a new layer for them. Uh, you could go to blurs and gaussian blur to blur them out even more. That looks pretty good, but I'm gonna experiment more. There we go. If the sun still doesn't look like a sun, you could just uh, put a blurred dot or something there. And change the blend mode to uh, screen or additive. But I think it's too much, so let's undo it. So, if you're happy with uh, the result, you can uh, export it. File, save as. But if you're still not happy, maybe you want the poster to be colder. Make a new layer with blue only, and set the blend mode to overlay. And change the opacity a bit. You could uh, try different colors or even different blend modes. And let's say we're happy with it now, so it's time to uh, export it. So file, save as, and save it somewhere. Remember to set it as uh, PNG. And now click flatten so it becomes a single image. And now we're done! So that's how you make a Splatoon poster from start to finish. I hope uh, it was uh, good enough because it's my first tutorial, so don't expect the best tutorial in the world. And if you want to say a dedicated tutorial to something like layering or editing, let me know down in the comments. That's all I have to say. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!